I'm Chris O'Neill from So The Distance. Thank you for joining me for my weekly vlog. I'm so glad you're here. And uh, so let's get started on what I've been up to this week. So first of all, I'm sitting at my new desk. Yeah, that's right, it arrived, it's here. And it is beautiful. I also got a shelf and filing cabinet that matches and I just love it. It went together well, the quality was good. Unlike the first desk that I got that was all banged up and chipped, this one is absolutely beautiful. And it was well packed and there wasn't a problem with it. So I'm in love with it, it's awesome. But some bad news is I still don't have a door. I said it last week, I was trying to be optimistic, but it, it didn't come in. And now they're saying the second week of April for my door. So I think we're on six weeks for the door. And I think we're on two and a half months for the dishwasher. So things are just so delayed. Uh, and I just, I want a date. So if, you know, if they would just tell me, you know, it's not gonna be until August, I can live with that. But I, this week to week is driving me a little crazy but small problems, right? We did, however, get cabinets for our laundry room and they uh, we installed those this week, which was great. So there are some things coming in and there are some improvements that are happening with our house, but everything's slow. And um, we're just trying, we want it all done right away. So we're being a little bit impatient with things. Uh, another project we've been working on, although it's more my husband who's been working on it, is uh, this wonderful desktop that he's building for his desk in his office. So he made this uh, out of um, pine, and I forget, I think it's glue edged pine or something, they're sheets that he got at Lowe's, and he created this whole thing and stained it last night, and it's just beautiful. So there are things, there's projects I'm helping him with, and there's projects that I'm working on, all kinds of stuff. So we're just very busy during the week and have a lot going on. I wish I had more time to sew. That would be nice, but hey, you know, we're getting everything together and that's good too. As for projects, I did finish my crazy quilt and I do have a video on some tips uh, that I made while making it. So we'll look at that in a minute. I also demo the thread holder that I talked about on Monday during the organization challenge and I'll show that you that too in a few minutes. So yesterday I went out with my parents and we went thrifting and all day long all we did was go to thrift shops. So I found some more quilts and some other linens and I also found these wonderful containers that I'm going to make pin cushions out of and sell on Etsy. So I do have an Etsy shop. It's right now there's only buttons in it but I am gonna be updating that this week and start to sell some of the pin cushions on there if anybody's interested. I'm also gonna use uh, vintage fabric to make those pin cushions. So just so you know, that's coming soon. And uh, what else? I think that's pretty much it. So let's just get started. First, I have a sewing room tour. It's just a short one. Just giving you an update on what it looks like in here because with a new desk, I move things around. I sold some furniture. I just repurposed some furniture and I'm, moving through trying to get everything organized still and this is real life it's not perfect and it is what i have right now as of today as of the recording so let's take a look at this okay so as we walk in still no door i can't wait for a door uh you can see my desk is right here i also need to get a new desk chair i've been looking at them but i'm quite happy with that one right now so um i also got this great filing cabinet and I moved my books over there, although I think I'm going to move them again. You can see more of my recording equipment. This is kind of my corner of shame. You can see my grandmother's quilt is there, and I still am trying to decide what to do with it. I have some files. You might recognize some other quilts from other videos, and I'm still working on that. Uh, I did move my fabric to this, and I have some challenges with that because it's a very deep um, shelf, and... I don't know whether to push all the fabrics back or do two layers, but I like being able to see them. So I'm still working through a lot of things. I have this table that came kind of with the house that I really like for recording, but it doesn't really match or go with anything, although it's a really handy table to have. And then I move this cabinet over and you can see the monitors there. That's what I use when I record to see myself so I know that I'm in the shot and whatever I'm showing is in the shot. So that's set up. I moved one of the bookshelves just from Walmart 
that I got in the very beginning, maybe like a year or two ago, the ones that I had on wheels at the old house, if you remember, uh, I moved it here and I set it uh, on end just to have some workspace. And you see, I updated my quilts a little bit. My machine is in the same place and things are coming along. Move this bookshelf over here. I still have this cabinet and here. So I don't know, I think it's progress. I think we're um, definitely cleaning out. There's things I've sold, there's things I've gotten rid of. I think there's less stuff in here, but I think I still have a long, long way to go. So it's coming together. It is real life. This uh, this video I took today, I didn't clean up or anything for it. It is a little embarrassing, especially that corner of shame where I have all that stuff stacked, but I'm getting there and it is, it is what it is, right? This is what's happening in my life right now. So on Monday, I talked about the thread holder that I absolutely love. And I did a quick video on how I filled it and how I use it because I think it's one of those tools that you see and you think, how in the heck does this even work? And I was like that too. So I got this thread holder at a Quilt Guild auction that I went to and it was one of those big baskets just stuffed full of stuff. I almost re-donated it because I thought it was weird and I, I had no idea if I'd ever even use it or need it or anything. Uh, but I took a chance on it and I pulled it out of its package and I started reading about it and now it's become my absolute favorite tool. I hand sew a lot and it's great. I have three of them, I can load them up, it's awesome. I can just bring them with me when I travel. Uh, if I'm just even in the living room watching TV or something like that, I can have them there all through all my needles threaded and ready to go. So before I show you the clip on how to use this wonderful tool, I just wanna let you know I, I pre-threaded 10 needles. So uh, when you're really using it in real life, you thread one, put it in, thread another, put it in, but I wanted for YouTube, the magic of YouTube, I wanted to be able to show you the whole thing quickly and fast forward through the boring parts and all that stuff. So let's take a look at how to use this wonderful tool. So the top comes off, it screws on like this, and you can actually put the top onto the bottom like that. And you're going to take your first needle that's threaded, and there is this notch here. Do you see that notch? Uh, you want to put it in before the notch, okay? So you slide the needle in, and then you slide the thread into that notch. Now notice it's doubled, okay? Uh, it doesn't have to be doubled all the way down, but it can be. Uh, and then you just hook it like that onto that little hook, and you rotate it until the tail's gone. Then you take your next needle, You put it into the next slot, get it lined up with that notch, just push it through the notch, make sure this hook catches it, and rotate it around. And you keep going until it's full. I'm going to speed this up. I just want to mention really quick that I am not getting paid for focusing on this product at all. It's just one, it really is one of my favorites. It's not an endorsement or anything like that. So just wanted to put that out there. Okay, so now it's completely full of threaded needles and I can just pull one out when I'm ready to use it and it keeps it nice and all of the others stay in. The only thing, I, if you had a really uh, good eye when I was threading it, um, when I was loading it, you probably saw where a piece of thread got over one of these loops, so I had to adjust that. So you do have to make sure that all of the threads are underneath, uh, but all it took was my nail going against it and pushing it under and it fixed the problem. So this is my favorite tool. Oh, and then you just cover it when you are taking it on a trip and it keeps it nice. You can lock it into place and you are all set to go. So it's really neat, isn't it? I, I love it. So consider that it's, it, if you, even if you have somebody that um, maybe has trouble threading needles and you have, I don't know, a grandson or granddaughter or somebody over who can thread needles really well, you can get some prepared 
you can do different colors and just have them ready to go if you have trouble with that. Uh, or if you just are like me and like to hand sew and don't want to really sit there and try to thread needles in between needing a needle and needing thread. So that's what I use it for. The last thing I want to talk to you about is this cool, cool, crazy quilt. Uh, I did some a clip on how I sewed it together, pinned it, uh, pressed it, all of that. Now, keep in mind, I kept a wider seam allowance and I uh, pressed my seams open. I normally wouldn't do that uh, on a regular quilt, just personal preference, but because there's so much bulk, I needed a bigger seam allowance and I needed to press those seams open. If I would have pressed them to the side, there would have been a lump in there and it would have been really hard to finish because basically you'd be going through quite a few layers of fabric when you're quilting it. Uh, so by pressing it open, it allowed for that bulk to be distributed and it also will allow me to do just a better job when I quilt it and finish this. So let's take a look at that now. Okay, so just like I did for the other pieces, I am um, going to use a half inch seam allowance and I am going to use my walking foot. That's gonna help stabilize all these pieces going through. But first I'm going to pin it into place because it is bulky. Usually I would baste this together, but because it is so thick, I uh, am going to pin it and I'm going to just match up those seams and put pins in and I'm going to use a lot of pins because like I said I like to baste uh, strips together like this and I can't so that makes me a little uncomfortable <laughs> so I'm going to pin these all together at the intersections and then I'll pin between each two. I'm also going to make sure that all those pieces are flat that seam allowance is flat too. So now I'm going to take this and put it through um, with my walking foot and I'm going to use a nice wide seam allowance like I did in all the other piecing all the blocks and strips together. So here we go. Now that that's done, I'm going to take this over to the ironing board. I'm going to press it closed and then I'm going to open it and open the seams like I did here. I'll show you that now. And I'm pressing that to set that seam. That one just needs a little touch up. Now I'm going to turn it over, see all those scraps on the back that I use, those uh, blue striped fabrics. I'm going to open this just with my fingers and there are a bunch of layers so I want to be really careful. I'm just going to run my finger up through here just to finger press it for a minute. It's still a little warm so that helps too. Okay, now I'm going to go back with the iron and get right in there. And as I go, I'm going to use the clapper to set those seams. So as I take that off, I'm going to put my clapper on it and hold it there for a second. And that's going to get those seams nice and flat. And I don't know why this block of wood works so well, but it does. I use it all the time. Then I'm just going to keep going. And again, there's no reason to rush, just like with sewing them together. If we take our time, we can get it right and not have to redo it or anything like that. And 
And there you go. It's nice and flat. I can go back and touch up these even. And I'm ready to add the next section to this. So I hope you enjoyed that quilt. Uh, it Hopefully next week I'll have a little bit more of it done. Right now it's just the quilt top. And I do have some cool stuff planned. Like I've said, I think a thousand times now. And anyway, I will see you next week for Lessons from an Old Quilt, for my organization challenge, and for blogs and a whole lot more. So stay tuned and thank you so much for all your support. As always, I'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye.